to officially welcome you here this evening, I'd like to welcome the President of Swimming Australia, Mr John Bertrand AM, to the stage. Please make John very welcome. Thank you very much. Just a, uh, some reflection here. Let me say that it's such an honour and a privilege to be President of Swimming Australia. I was speaking to uh, Major General Angus Campbell uh, just before Christmas, and uh, he's, he's uh, Deputy Chief of Army, very interesting man, and he said, John, he said, there's two sports in this country which fundamentally we believe as Australians we should be at the very top. One is cricket, and look at the turnaround we've seen with the Australian test team, and one is swimming. Swimming is part of the DNA of this country, is part of the heart and soul. And we know, and I know, Swimming Australia, we are proud custodians of the incredible history of swimming in, in Australia. From Fanny Durack in 1912, when she was our f first Olympic gold medalist at Stockholm in the 100 metres, when she had to fight to even represent this country. The concept of women in an athletic endeavour like swimming was just not heard of, 1912. Through to Dawn Fraser and Murray Rose in the 56 Olympic Games, Shane Gould in 72, and indeed Karen Perkins, Ian Thorpe and Grant Hackett. What an incredible series of people. And then Patria Thomas and indeed Madam Butterfly herself, Susie O'Neill. We recognise our history, that's clear. And we also were excited about the future. Glasgow, Rio, and indeed 2020, Tokyo. Our vision is very simple. It is to acquit ourselves such that this country, Australia, is proud of the Australian swim team at the Rio 2016 Olympics. And indeed, to be the number one swimming nation in the world by 2020, by the Tokyo Olympics, six and a half years to go. And people say, well, that's, you know, we're taking on the United States of America with the whole college system. We're seeing the tsunami coming out of China, Russia, all these nations with massive numbers of people. How can Australia, how can we actually suggest that that's a plausible vision? Well, I look at the Australian Open tennis only a couple of weeks ago in Melbourne, and I see the domination of the country of Spain in the world of tennis. It's a phenomena. There's nothing special about Spain as a sporting nation. I look at the All Blacks and that small country of New Zealand with three and a half million people in a super competitive world of rugby, dominating year after year with people focused and the commitment that's associated with that. And indeed, it is a possible dream. In fact, talking to Jaco, our new coach, our new head coach, he said, it's not just an impossible dream, it is this country's right to assume that we'll be number one. How cool is that? So from my point of view and from our point of view, there's, three, or there's actually five key links in a chain that have to be world class if we're to achieve this vision, the achievable vision. And first of all, obviously the athletes have to be world class, both as individuals and as a, as a team. And I was privileged to sit into a team leaders meeting this morning and what a, what, as I say, what a privilege to be associated with these beautiful young men and women of the Australian swim team. The next link in the chain are the coaches, the heroes of this sport in so many ways, the passion of the coaching. There's something like 2,000 coaches in Australia, from the very grassroots to the very best of the best. And the ability and the opportunity of coaching of the coaches and testing the thinking of what's currently uh, accepted practice and seeing where we go as a nation, as a swimming nation in particular. The third link is technology, the future of, all, of everything throughout our organisation. Into the internet, it has changed everything. And indeed, the administration has to be world class. And then finally, the other heroes of this equation, the parents, the mums and dads who get their kids out of bed at five in the morning and drive them to the pool and pick them up and get to the pool in the afternoon. How, how good is that? We get the, all, this all these elements aligned onto the same bus going in the same direction and the right direction, then indeed we can actually be number one in the world from the Olympic podium 
and Paralympic podium right through to grassroots, to the level where the United States of America benchmark Australian swimming as world best practice. That's the vision. And the glue for any high performance team is very simple. Cultural values of trust. An easy word to say, but really hard to deliver. Trust with a capital T. And integrity and honesty within the organisation and throughout the organisation. And indeed, transparent communication. In other words, what you say you deliver. Nothing else can be other than that. What you say you deliver. Transparent communication. We're talking about building trust within a high performance team now. And indeed, also for us Australians, we've got to have fun. We're talking about passion to the highest level. You just look at those young men and women following the black line. You talk about passion, absolutely. And we need to support that. And finally, in terms of a high performance team, from my perspective, never being satisfied by the status quo. We do, history tells us, we know that the game is changing and improving all the time. You take any 20 year slice of the Olympic movement over 140 years of competition, and there's no comparison between 20 years ago and now. We know that, for example, that the standards set at Rio will surpass, will surpass London. And beyond that in Tokyo will surpass Rio. We know that. So the question is, how do we get there faster than any other nation in the world? We are not satisfied with the status quo. We move the, we're now in the business of going higher, further and faster, as the Olympic dream says. Finally, I'd like to acknowledge and congratulate members of the Australian swim team who have recently been named in the Australian Day 2004 honours list. We're talking about Medal of the Order of Australia. This is one of the highest accolades that our country can bestow on our citizens. And those people are Michael Anderson, Michael Orprince, Kate Campbell, Blake Cochran, Ellie Cole, Elisa Coots, Catherine Downey, Madison Elliott, Brittany Elmsley, Matthew Hannibal, Brendan Hall, Yolene Kokla, Matthew Levy, Andrew Pasterfield, Prudence Watt, and Annabelle Williams. And of course, 2014, Young Australian of the Year, Jackie Frenny. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here's to an exciting journey. Thank you very much.